started with our Christian education. And we're just going to open up with a song. Come on. This is the day. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord. Come on. I will. And this year the day, this year, this year the day, come on, that the Lord, come on everybody, oh, this year the day, come on, lift your voice this year now, that the Lord, that the Lord, I will rejoice, made up my mind. And be glad, thank you. And be glad to oh, this is the day that the Lord I will come on. Oh, this is the day, come on. This is the day that the Lord has. Oh, this is the day, come on. This year the and be glad. Oh, this. Hey, that the Lord I will rejoice. Oh, this year the day. This year the day. Come on. That the Lord has made. If you clap, you'll feel better. I will rejoice. Hey, I'm going to rejoice. Be glad to, and be glad to hold this. Okay. I will reach you. Come on. This is the day. This is the day. Come on. This is the day. Come on. This is the day. I made up my mind. To, this is the day. Last time, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, give him praise. Come on, lift your voice and give him praise. I know we're going into a session, but can you praise him? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's give our God a hand. Let's give our God a hand. Thank you, praise God, for being here. Can y'all hear me? I can't hear myself, but God, we, we just want to say thank you all for coming out today. God has been good to us. Let's give God a hand. And let's give yourself a hand. <laughs> all right. We thank God for his blessings. We're going to start off with a scripture, and then we'll have prayer, and our scripture text is going to be uh, where we've been, our theme uh, has been Psalms 1 and 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor, nor, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and the law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters and that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he does do shall prosper. So whatever, if we stay with God, we're going to prosper. He that walketh, continuously walk with God, God going to bless us. So he said, we have to have a delight. It's a pleasure for me to be saved. I'm not, I'm not sad. I'm happy. I'm happy being saved. But let us pray, and uh, we'll bring our speaker. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness, your tender mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. Ask, so God, to bless us, Lord God, throughout this council, Lord. Bless, oh God, bless our pastors who are here, Lord. 
Bless us, Lord. You've already blessed us and continue to bless us, Lord. Strengthen our hearts and minds. Keep us encouraged. Keep us inspired to walk with you. And these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We have our, our uh, teacher today. It's going to be uh, Sister Evangelist uh, Christine Davis. Christine Davis has been an educator for over 34 years. She comes from, uh, I think it's uh, Clinton, Detroit, Michigan. Okay, she, <laughs> she moved here. She, she's one of our own from Mississippi. She came, she was under Bishop Coleman, and now she's our director of education. And we're going to introduce her, and, and for some uh, know her and some don't, but we're going to ask Sister Christine Davis to come in and bless us with what the Lord has laid on our heart. Sister Christine Davis. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Truly, the Lord is good. How many know that he is good? Amen. Amen. How many know that we would be nothing without him? Amen. Absolutely nothing without him. God bless. Uh, Brother Irving, are you going to come and uh, help me? Move this part. We, we were here Thursday trying to see where I should stand and, and where the uh, clicker would reach. Thank you. And thank you, yes. And if you cannot see the top to the bottom where you are sitting, just adjust yourself on both sides of you. You have to be able to see the top and all the way down to the bottom of the slide. All right. Certainly protocol has been given where we are honoring, uh, we are honoring our diocesan of this particular council, SCDC. We are honoring our chairman, who is my pastor, Bishop Robert Nelson Fortson, Sr. And we are honoring our assistant chairman, who is present with us right now, Bishop Richard Rogers. And we thank you. Yeah, we, we think we have it everything together. However, what I'm going to do is you're going to start the lesson. So I'm glad that you are here, and I'm glad that you're here in the numbers that you are, and I'm glad you're sitting next to somebody that you don't mind talking to because you will be talking to them for just a few minutes. I, I, I keep up with the time. I plan to hopefully be finished by uh, 11, hopefully. No, we did a 15-minute adjustment, didn't we? Yes, 11. I think they moved it another 15 minutes. So we'll... We'll, we'll make that adjustment, but I hope you are sitting next to somebody. And this is what I want you to be able to do. That's why I want you to be able to see the screen. Everywhere you are sitting, you have to be able to see the screen from the top to the bottom. In most Sunday school uh, texts, there's a thing called a focus thought. Sometimes it's called the truth about God. It has different names. This morning, you're going to develop that. And I'm only going to give you three minutes to do so. But you have to watch the screen in order to know what to do. This screen will summarize what should be your idea of the focus thought. And I'm going to walk around to see that you are doing that because I am going to call on some of you to share it once, you, once your three minutes is over. Let me just, Brother uh, Micah, I think you... You're in my path of that. <laughs> there you go. Let's see if it's going to do this. All right, everybody be ready to watch it from the beginning. Is it doing it? Okay. It did it perfectly by the time we ended up uh, Thursday. Let's try it from here. Believe it or not, I wanted to do this about 15 minutes ago because I don't like being late or holding you up. Try it again.
That's not it. He's just, just turned. He's going to start it all over again, I think. That one. Point it up. Let me see. I can point it. Oh, that's not the projector, though. The projector is back there. I mean, the projector is the modern stuff. <laughs> It is now, it used to be a screen, and I have a screen in my car, and it used to be a little projector. I have that on this seat over here, but this is called an LED board, which is much better, much clearer, etc. when it works. There it is. All right, watch it. That will stay up while you determine what the focus thought should be. Just looking at that, and you come up with some kind of sentence that tells you what the focus thought should be. That's a little person, two people at the bottom, the word decisions going across, two little pathways, and the title, The Blessed Way. Begin. Talking to somebody next to you, what you think the focus thought is based upon that picture. And everybody should be talking by this time. As I'm coming by your row, you should be talking. All right, I need to be hearing you. I know you're participating because our bishop and our chairperson for the Christian education, they're participating. All righty, all righty. I'll give you one more minute. I'll give you one more minute. One minute. Because it's not going to be long. Because remember in the focus in the book, the focus thought is not long. It's just kind of like a sentence, a statement. All right, I'm going to start right here, and everybody's listening, and what happens is, if they say something that you would have said, if I point to you, just say it was already said, and because you're telling the truth, I know that that's what will have happened. <laughs> all right, right here, let's start with you all. Just, just say what you, what you would say. Staying on the right path according to the blood. She says, staying on the right path according to the blood. All right, let's go right over here. Narrow is the way that leads to righteousness. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. With right? Narrow. Uh oh, and, and I pulled the mic away, but she said, narrow is the way and broad. She said, and which path will you take? All right, all right. Let's, let's hear somebody else right here. I believe they're saying choose the right way because it says decision, so choose the right way. All right, she's saying choose the right way. Anybody else? have something that you have not heard yet. All right, let me. Straight and narrow, okay, you've heard that one. All right, let's go right here, and then I'm coming here, okay. Go ahead. I must take the proper path to get to the blessed way. All right, I must take the proper path to get to the blessed way. All right, right here. Decisions to follow Jesus. Decisions to follow Jesus. Acknowledge him. All thy ways acknowledge him. All right, all right, I'm coming around to you, sis. I guess you can meet me over that way. There you go. Okay. I can't hand you my mic, but just speak to me. Okay. 
both man and woman must make a decision to be blessed. All right. Excellent. Guess what? All of you are right because, again, the author would have written it in their own way or however they would have written it. But guess what it does say? First of all, there are only two ways. You don't see a lot of different, you don't see extra ways there. There are two ways, and everyone will approach those ways. But you must make the decision to choose the blessed way. And that is the focus thought for this lesson. So now we can go on with the lesson. <laughs> Thank you. And you were right. You see it? The first thing that the Lord showed me was that the blessed way is straight and it is narrow. Now there's something about that. I've been saved since I was 11. I am now 78, will be 79 in August. So that's a long time. Not perfectly, but it's a long time in the Lord, good to his grace and his mercy. However, listen to what I want to say about that. Sometimes when I was younger, when you heard that word straight, it was almost like you were talking about a, a, a what's that thing called? A straight jacket or something. And therefore, people didn't smile. We, they, are, they already had on the longest clothes that you could see around of anybody else. And in some organizations, they had the afro before the afro was an afro uh, because you didn't straighten or curl your hair. So this was a part of that straight kind of thinking, but it was more legalistic, more traditional or traditions than it was what God is saying. What he is saying is that there are some things that he is telling us to do and to be, and we have to be that. We cannot move to the right of it. We cannot skew ourselves to the left of it. It is just simply straight down the path. In the 60s, um, that's when you get to be old, you can do that. In the 60s, they came out with this thing called situational ethics. And what it meant was that there are some things that are right and there are some things that are wrong. But there are some situations when the right can become wrong and the wrong can become right. Well, now they have a different name for it now, and it's just simply called your authentic self, meaning do what you want to do, be what you want to be, act like you want to act, say what you want to say. So it's, it has a different name, but the thought is still there. But the scripture says... Straight. Okay. Matthew 7, 14 says, Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. In other words, most of the time, the average person, that is one of the reasons why an altar call is so important. It doesn't have to be forever long because if the gospel has been preached and it should happen to prick their heart and God is drawing them, you don't have to keep begging them because guess what's going to happen? They already want to know. On the day of Pentecost, they made their own altar call. Men and brethren, what shall we do? I done heard the word. What shall we do now? It has pricked my heart. It has made me change it has made me change the way I thought I should go or the way I want to go. So now we're talking about a straight path, and it is life. And the reason that they don't find it is it is because of this second one. Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. If you'll notice, I was an only child. I didn't mind being an only child. Um, well, I was reared as an only child. I didn't mind that. But I did like when I got with friends. And what happens with this, when you start talking about that, that there are many on there, those many have voices. They have bright lights. They have things that are attractive. They have ways that you don't, that this, this, this little straight way is a little too tight. 
Because guess what? If you talk about me, I'm not going to like you. And I'm going to talk about you back. And the reason I'm going to do that is because that's what they do over here. And if I should tell one of them over here what you said to me, they will even give me advice how to come back at you. This is on your job. Those of you that are in school, this is in your classrooms. If you say something about somebody, this is, this is first it was real bullying, like they would push on you, they pull your chair out, they do something else. Uh, I, I, I got bullied because I was younger than the people that were in my grade, and so they didn't like that. So I had stuff, notebooks hidden and different kinds of things. We didn't even, I didn't even know the word bully then. I just found my notebook and kept on working whenever I, whenever I could find it. And then I finally did get, what is that called? Suspended. Because I would go to the counselor and I would say, so-and-so says she's going to beat me up. And the last time I went, she said, you ought to take care of yourself. So, <laughs> so I had a cousin that had taught me how to box because he said, girls fight crazy. Like they just scratch and pull he said, you just got to get your fist balled up, and you got to hit them, and you got to do this so that you can block their hits. And so this girl was going to do something else to me in our class, and so I did what I had been advised. And I was advised by my counselor, who immediately suspended me. And not only did she suspend me, but she put me back a half a grade. <laughs> she, said, she said I was just too young, and I was just too immature, and, I, and probably was probably was. But the idea is, is that there's always going to be somebody that's going to tell you something, how to get over, how to get back at, what to do. If it, one of the things that they talk about sometimes even in marriages, you don't always tell what your marital problem is because you may be telling it to somebody that has wanted your husband for the longest. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm not just talking about outside of church. It could have been inside a church. This could have been a person that, that thought that the Lord really gave them your husband before he chose you. So now that's, that, that, that doesn't even sound right. It doesn't it sound a little messy. It certain, that sentence didn't sound straight. It didn't sound narrow. That is what he's asked us to do. So when we look at this blessed way then, that's the first thing that the Lord spoke to me. He said it is straight and it is narrow. It, it, it doesn't, you, 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 don't, you don't really have any options. Now, here's where the options come. And I want you to know that, that every religion, just about every Protestant religion, can find their scripture, their founding scripture, in your same Bible. There's a reason for that. Because the scripture says you're supposed to do line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. But what they do is they hunt a little. And they, uh, we were, uh, uh, Elder Deacon Friendly told you that we were uh, in prison ministry. So one day, um, it was night that Sister Morrow and I were going. And the warden, he's Church of God in Christ at that time. And he says, you all wouldn't come to our church, would you? I said, yes. I said, your church is in the Bible. His eyes got so big. I said, turn to Acts, the 10th chapter. That is the church of God and Christ. And it is because they do believe in, they believe in processes. So one of their processes is called sanctification. Where they got that from is in John where he says, bring us fruit for repentance. And what that means is that before you say you're going to seek or tarry for the Holy Ghost, you have to stop some of this stuff you're doing. So you've been smoking joints and whatever, so you just, you just, you just stop that. So that's a fruit meat for repentance. So I said, well, all these people came and they really, and they wanted the Lord. And the Holy Ghost fell on them just like the church of God and Christ. I said, now there's another part of that scripture. I don't know if you've seen that or yet, but it's just down a few more verses where Peter says, inasmuch as we have heard them speak as we have spoke, can anybody forbid water? And they bought them. And they baptized him in Jesus' name. So he just, he never responded. 
he just kind of smiled at me. And I said, all right, good night, sir. And we, we, we went on to it. But I wanted him to know, and you need to know it. That's how straight it is. You can't take a piece of it and keep it. And we can't say they're not, they don't have the Holy Ghost because those people did have the Holy Ghost. So when you're witnessing to them, you can't come down on them like, you, you, can, you can say, oh, I said, you can say, uh, there's more for you. You, 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 you. you need to go all the way. You can say things like that. But if you want to start talking to them about what you ain't and what you're not and where you're not going, you are not doing anything but having an argument. That's not the straightness that it used to be. That was, that was how folks used to do that. They would go to a, a family reunion and, every, and wouldn't nobody be going to heaven after that but the, the ones that were saved. The whole family, everybody, the, the, the pit master barbecuing, he was going to hell. Every, because that was out of a lack of wisdom. He that winneth souls is wise. So, there is your blessed way is straight and it is narrow. Let's go with the next one. Help us. There you are. Here's the other one that you need to know. The blessed way requires consistency. See, you, can, you, you can't be going straight now and something comes up and you decide to go over this way a little bit. You can't do that. It requires, it's a must. You can't get away with God on his blessed way acting like he's changed his mind or like he didn't mean it. Or here's the best one that we really do. We say he understands. Guess what? He does understand. He understood us when he made us before the foundation of the world. That is why he has set these principles in place. Because he does understand. He understood that, that, that somebody was going to kill somebody because of jealousy. Somebody was going to steal something that they couldn't afford. He understood all of those. He understood that just so that you would be looking at me a different way, I might tell a lie. Well, if I keep on telling you the things he understood, you'll hear the Ten Commandments in a minute, won't you? Because he knew that. And he gave you the word for those things. He understands, but he does not tolerate. And what you call toleration, he said, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put a pause on that one for you. I'm long-suffering, but I'm not like you think I am. I'm only this way so that you will come to repentance. Because my word doesn't change. So, so here he is then. We're walking, and in Psalms 1 and 1, uh, that verse was already read. Um, somebody can read it as closer to me real quick if you get it real quick. Uh, I'll, I'll give it to you in just a minute. But in Psalms 1 and 1, it's going to show you what he's talking about. I just want someone to say it out loud. There you go. Here's the, okay. All right. Begin with, go ahead. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. All right, hold right there. All right, now watch. That requires consistency. The first one says that you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I can't get my directions from an ungodly person. And even, for example, I, 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 I happen to have, uh, uh, I belong to the American Council of Christian Education, American <laughs> Association of Christian Counselors. Uh, that doesn't mean that I wouldn't go to a, a secular counselor. But guess what? My Holy Ghost would be the filter. If I'm told something that I know that's not in the Bible, I can't do that. And the reason I say that, because there have been some Christians, the same organization that I belong to, 
they are the ones that developed, first of all, that, group, that uh, site called eHarmony. And if you look at it, it has wonderful questions that get down into who you are and probably suggest or recommend that this would be a good pair, a good couple. However, when I saw them show a homosexual couple that had found each other on eHarmony, I said, oh, no. And that came from a Christian author of that whole program. What I'm trying to say to you, we are making excuses. We are changing things. We are fixing things to suit what society says. You can't take that counsel. You're, you don't walk in the counsel of what you think about so-and-so. I don't want to know necessarily what you think about it. And even if I ask you, I've got to run that by the scripture. Sister, Sister uh, Merriweather this morning used the word align. What you give me, what I hear, what I follow, what I decide upon has to align with the word of God. And you, you hear that little word in there, line, it's spelled L-I-G-N, but it also means straight L-I-N-E. It's a straight line. So, so watch this. When it tells me that I cannot, my mind and my whole disposition has to be, when you try to give me some counsel as an ungodly person, my answer to you is no. And guess what? Because of the way our mind is made, you know the computer is designed after the mind. Our mind pulls in a lot of stuff that we think we threw away. Sometimes it's best not even to let it pull it in. Sometimes you got to flip the channel. Amen. Sometimes you got to you got to you got to come out of that YouTube, out of that particular program, out of that uh that thing that just popped up. I wasn't looking for that. Well, if you weren't looking for it, why are you looking at it? If you weren't looking for it, why are you looking at it? When it pops up, pop it out. Amen. It's real easy, and it's easier than what this has been because of where we are. <laughs> the way that this is. This, you, it's on, you sitting there with it. It's on your phone or it's on your computer. You're sitting right there, click it. And this is, what, this is what, and if you're receiving emails and things like that that you're opening and other kinds of text messages, you can write the word stop. They won't stop immediately, but you can say stop. And you can unsubscribe because you didn't subscribe, or if you did, you wasn't supposed to. So you can, these are, the Lord has made this life and this blessed way easier than we have thought it. Easier than we have even taught it. Because it's going to be a reason why it gets easy in another slide. But now watch that. So I'm not going to walk in the council. And I'm not going to stand in the way of sinners. One of the understandings with this part of that verse is, what do you mean when you say stand in the way of sinners? When you're standing, usually you're just pretty steady. So where sinners are and what they do, and you know it on your job, you know it in your classroom, you know it uh, in, among family members, and you can stand there, you can dwell there, you can stay there. And what the, the other part of that standing in the, in the way, it means that you really can, if you know how to do it in love, you can confront the thing. Not only can you, but in some instances, you must confront it. If you have some little children over your house... This happened to my mother once. She did a vacation Bible school in the house, and she, 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 um, she had these little crafts, and you sew a de uh, decoration around a scripture. S but they needed a little help when they went home. When she, everybody brought theirs back. These are just our neighbors. And the other one, she said, my mama said, this ain't nothing but a mess. 
Now, I, I watched, I tried to see how my mama was going to respond to that. Because guess what? These other children had done it and had brought it. This was maybe like the second day of vacation Bible school. What would happen on the third day? If one mama thought it was a mess, then the other children would not be as willing. She said, it really isn't a mess. It's the, it's the word of God. Let me help you with it. And she just took it from her and started doing it. And then that way, watch this. The little girl felt good because she had hers pretty. They had like different yarns and colors, and uh, just like the others. But you have to confront something so that it does not contaminate the rest of the stuff. You, 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 can't let a, you can't let a sinner do something in your presence, in your house, your child, you feeding them, you clothing them. You can't, that can't happen. But it does. You know why? Because I love he. I love her. Yeah, I love you, and I'm not putting you out, but you are not going to do that in this house. And I have done that. I have done that to my daughter, uh, even as, as, a, as an adult. I know what you are practicing. I know the lifestyle that you are trying to do, but you're not going to do it in this house. And I love all people, but I love God more. You see it? That's, that's, that's now, that's called not standing in the way. Because guess what? When they preach that and they say it, most of the time y'all, y'all all say, good, because I, I don't go to parties. I don't go to clubs. That ain't the only place where sinners are. That's not the only place where, where sinners exercise and, and, and make themselves known and their, their thoughts and their desires known. So wherever you are, don't stand there. Just stay there. Do something about it or move out of the way. That's what you, that's what you have to do. And that means you have to say no. We're so used to saying yes. Who was that? Uh, uh, was it just do it? That's uh, Jordan's. What is that? Yeah. I think when we got into that and we just started doing that as a slogan and that just got to feeling good. But it don't mean that. We got, sometimes we got to say no. Sit in the seat of the scornful. Oh, my goodness. The, my pastor did this one last night. It was real good. And, and it was so funny. I, had, I, I almost laughed out loud, but I didn't want to because you're supposed to say amen out loud. But um, he was talking about some of the things that people do you can't sit in the seat of the scornful. Now, you may say, I'm not scornful, but you're listening to it. You're not stopping it. And the, and the joke was that one of the individuals uh, appeared sort of like last night <laughs> for a minute. And it was, it was it, I said, oh, but they appeared before pastor got up to preach. But I know them for doing that. I know the parking lot ministries. I know the bathroom ministries, the hallway ministries. And that's why I'm calling them ministries, because you're preaching stuff. Pastor is asking for, let's say, uh, uh, an opportunity to give to help something. He's always asking for money. Well, I, I remember when I was so-and-so and so-and-so, and so, and they didn't give me nothing. I mean, I didn't get nothing. See my face? I'm just, I mean, my face getting scorny. I didn't get, they didn't give me nothing. And you sitting there listening to that. Well, I know what you mean, girl, because, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, some trees fell down in my yard. I had to pay $5,000 to get them cut. Not, not, no deacon, nobody came. The deacons, that's not their occupation. And, so, and some of them do have a saw, but it wouldn't have cut down a whole tree. <laughs> it, it'll cut some of those, you know, the branches to get them to the three feet that the, uh, what the garbage people say you're supposed to have. But a whole tree, <laughs> see, you, you see the scorn part of it? You cannot sit in that seat. Always finding fault. Finding fault about the choir, finding fault about the ushers, finding fault about the dinner. 
I ain't going in dinner because I ain't going to be paying no $10 for no dinner. Oh, yes, you are. You're going to pay more than that when you go to the other places that you go to. And what is so unfortunate, sometimes you'll even leave the $10 church dinner and go to one of those places. Because you are a scorner, you are a scoffer, you are a complainer, you are a mocker. This is who you are. And you cannot sit in the seat with them. How can we always sing that song? <laughs> Which song did you sing? Which song did you write? None. <laughs> and you didn't. But you have something to say against it. That's what I'm saying. Be sure, saints, this blessed way is really a blessed way. It is a happy way. It is a joyful way. I have more happiness as I have learned more about the Lord. Because I have learned that he created me, he loves me, and he desires that I have, watch this one, life and more abundantly. And it does not mean that I have to wait until 1 Thessalonians 4 and 18. I can have it right now. Now, does that mean I'm going to have everything that I want? No. Does it mean I'm going to drive the finest car that you see out in the parking lot? No. I had to tell my own self that I had a car that I liked, and it and it and a lady ran a light, and it it totaled kind of like the yeah it totaled it, and so I didn't want to buy a new car because that one I just finished paying for it, uh, so I bought a used one, and in my head I kept thinking I had not bought a used car since 1969, which was my first new car. I said, oh my goodness. Well, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to keep it clean as much as I can. Not always, but I'll try to. And it's black. It doesn't show as much. And I just had all that in my mind. One day, I walked into a beauty supply place. And I went there really just to find a scarf to cover some of these bald spots. They didn't have the scarf. As I was going out, they had this prettiest black, uh, what do you call it? steering wheel cover. And the Lord let that thing almost jump off the thing. Because guess what I needed to do? I needed to buy it, put it on my used car, and stop feeling bad about it. Because that was nothing but pride. Be appreciative of it. And that's what I do. I put it on. I can find it in the parking lot where I park. Uh, again, because you have to do the right thing in order not to have this complaining, mocking person. Say no to it. All right. So how do you make these right decisions? Because that's going to be important. And I'm, I'm hurrying. I think this is the second to the last one. You do it by faith and love. You've got to have faith in God. That's coming out of Hebrews, the 11th, and that first part of the 6th. You must believe. It is impossible for you to walk that blessed way unless you believe God. You've got to believe he exists. You've got to believe he's who he says he is. You've got to believe that he can do what he says. You've got to believe that he's not a man that he should lie. And he's not a man that he has to repent about anything. You have to believe that. And then not only do you have to believe that, but you also have to, in John 14 and 15, if you say you love him, that automatically obligates you to keep his commandments. How do you say you love him and don't do anything he says? He says, I want you to have your tithes and offerings Well, the Lord knows the, the, the economy just is just messed up. Here we go. Here we go. The Lord knows again. Yes, he does. He knows the economy is messed up. Uh, wait, he knows you have to pay your bills. He also knows that some of your bills you shouldn't have even made. <laughs> and according to scriptures... I can show you that. 
that you should not have made some of those bills. This is, this is not a finance class, but just, just, just Google it, finance and the Bible, and you'll get about two or three things that you want. Now, that blessing may not be the $100 that you put in your tithe envelope. It may be that you have been riding, and I did this once, riding on a tire that had a bubble. It, it, it really it looked like this, like a, what you call it, hickey on your head. That thing could have blown any time. When I discovered it, it was at a time when I could even afford to replace it. But I had been driving on it forever. And it wasn't on the bottom. It was on the side. That's where those, belt, those belts are. And they'll break through it. And you can also have a show enough accident. That's one of those blessings that he'll pour out. So... So here's what the psalm says. Somebody pass that mic to someone else so that the, not another reader can do it. Read the second verse. Psalms 1 but, and 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Here's how you get to know that word. You have to delight in the law. There, there's a scripture in Psalms 119 and 18, and it says... Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Wouldn't that be a good prayer to pray when you get ready to open up your Bible for study or for reading or devotion? Open mine eyes that I may behold. Now, guess what it's telling you? There are some things that are wonderful in his word that you have not heard yet. That he will reveal to you. That he will open you up and you'll be so convinced because you'll know he did it. Sometimes that scripture, we think it means you don't come to Bible class and you don't go to Sunday school where it says you have no need that nobody teach you, whatever that, how that goes. That's not what it, <laughs> it means. That if you have the Holy Ghost, he will do the teaching. He will open, he will say something to you that you never saw in that scripture. But it's just the thing you need for right now in your life. And so that is what you want to do. You want to delight and be happy about it. Be happy to pick, pick up your Bible. Be, be, uh, I, I have one. I have, I have my Bible and I have about 300 books on my phone, Bible study books. But my real little Bible... I sent it to Greenwood, Mississippi to have another cover put on it because I love my Bible. That's mine. I, want, I, I, I like grabbing it, and I can look in it, and I can read it, and I can highlight in it. I can do, you can do the same thing. You don't have to be a teacher or a preacher. You just have to be somebody walking on that road. You have to be somebody traveling on the way, on your way to heaven, and you're so glad. Well, how are you going to get there? By his directions. It's the blessed way. Delights in the law and meditates. Meditate means to think about and to ponder. Uh, yeah, that's what that means. That's what that says. Have you raised your hand if you've ever read a scripture and saw something that you hadn't seen before? Raise your hand if that's ever happened to you. It should, that's, that's what you want. And you can't tell me that didn't make you, your soul feel good because it's like something personal that the lover of your soul that created you came down and decided just to talk to you about that particular thing. This is what this means, so and so and so and so. And this is what this is. This, this is what I was talking about when I said this. Isn't that a good feeling? And if you haven't had it, ask for it. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Delight in it. Be glad. Be happy. And I think this is the second to the last one, and we'll be on our turn. Fortune gave, gave us the 15 minutes, and then she got the other 15 minutes to do what she has now. Look what happens when you do that. Whenever you get to where you love the Lord, all you're going to do is say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You may not.
not believe this, but we were here. There you go. The blessed way is going to result in blessings. You're going to be fruitful. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, those fruit of the Spirit should be there. And they are there. You just have to let them work. You just have to activate them. The person you don't want to forgive, remember love is there. Love will forgive. The person that you can't stand, that gets on your last nerve, you tired of waiting at this song, so I hate, I hate going to that store because they just take forever and ever and ever and ever. It's something in there about patience, long-suffering. It's already in there. Let it work. Let it out. And guess what? The Lord is so wonderful. He does remind you. Raise your hand again. If you've ever been reminded when the spirit, the fruit has not been operating. Do not leave me hanging up here with, with my only hand. Thank you. Because you know, you know I'm not the only one. He will remind you. you he'll, he'll even tell you. She was talking, Sister uh, Keisha was talking, Makisha was talking about diet and, and exercise, etc. He'll call you on that. We don't want him to because the stuff tastes good. And, 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 I, and it is the funniest thing. Grease makes food taste much better. That is why most of your places fry stuff. Some places you can't even get a baked nothing but a piece of bread. And it's slapped with a lot of butter on top of it already. They don't even let you put your own butter on it. It comes to you with it. You understand what I'm saying? So when you're looking at the things that we could do and that are there for us to be able to do, that's what we're going to have to start moving into, letting temperance enough. I'm not going to do that anymore. And, and, and I, I, I'll tell you, I told you I'll be 79. I just decided my, my feet feel older than 79. But, but the rest of me feels all right, but it has begun to feel better because I decided a year and more, year and some months more, I'm not eating fried foods anymore. And I don't. And, I, and, and, and this, you talk about the devil, I'm going to give you a little trick of the devil. He told me that I could use unsalted potato chips. So I bought them. I bought unsalted potato chips and I developed a nice taste for them. I could eat them. And guess what? You know what was making them taste so good? If you turn them on the back, they had more fat in them than the regular <laughs> potato chips. Because some had to make them taste that good. And so I killed them about two years ago. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep on putting stuff in here that's gonna keep me from being able to function as much as he has left me here. See, that's what doing right does. It actually gives you a way to say to the Lord, I appreciate being here. I appreciate you using me. I appreciate your being in your service. I love you. I love your people. Bless me, Lord. And he will. All right. All right. And you'll be prosperous. And you will be alive. And then guess what? That's, that's down here. Really alive and enjoying yourself. But also you will be alive eternally. And I want you all to sing this song with me. Because this is the way we're going to end it if I ever get to it. The scripture says, okay, I know what's happening now. It's gonna happen, something's going to happen to the red one. is funny. Okay, there it is. The blessed are going to be fruitful, prosperous, alive. But the scripture says the ungodly are what? Not so. Not so. They're not going to get what we get. And everybody stand on your feet and we're going to sing this song if it ever comes up. Maybe you shouldn't stand until I can get it to come up. Oh. <laughs> on this side especially. Okay. You can. There it is. It's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. Do you know that one? It's a highway 
to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there. Oh, but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. We are walking up the King's Highway. Oh, if you're not walking, start while I'm talking. Walking up the King's Highway. Watch this part. There is a blessing you'll be possessing. Walking up the King's Highway. God bless you. Let's give God a hand. Let's give God a hand. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We thank God for what our hearts have heard today. And uh, this is Sister Christine Davis. Let's give her a hand. We're going to change, transition over. Okay. Someone is sitting with a, a little flower vase. It's inside of the, on the inside of the uh, little booklet thing that's on in front of your desk. If you find it, this book is yours. Just a little help as you walk this blessed way. Thank you, thank you. I am going to just make a couple of announcements real quick about the scholarship for the SEDC uh, scholarship, Bishop Coven scholarship. Uh, you all can apply for it. Uh, one other thing I want to say too, it's a blessing. Uh, how many of you all attend Sunday school or the new word is Christian education, but I'm just going to say Sunday school. How many of you all attend Sunday school regularly? If, if you don't, you're missing a treat. You're missing a treat. You're treating yourself. You're treating yourself. So I just want to encourage you, come to Sunday school because you get a chance to ask questions. You get a chance to, to hear from different speakers. So I just want to thank God for Sunday school. That's what I grew up on. I've been saved for over 40 years. And I told a bishop here, I said, there is a scripture that I learned when I was uh, five years old. I still remember the Sunday school teacher. And if anybody can uh, interpret this scripture, come to me and I'll give you $100. Jesus fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. Come interpret it to me and I'll, God will bless you. Well, God bless you all in Jesus' name. We're dismissed. Uh, Bishop Forson, you want to come up? Bishop Forson, you can come up. We're done. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. Uh, we certainly thank and praise God for uh, the uh, Christian education session that we just had and had a wonderful power unity services this morning as well. God has been good to us uh, on this final day of the SEDC Council. We, we thank God for those that have been joining us uh, via live stream and those of you that have made your way out to the house of God on today. I'm before you today. Our chairman is uh, requesting uh, that we remind you again for those that have not uh, participated in the, the offering that we ask uh, for. We, of course, ask for an uh, offering of $100 uh, for, from uh, each of you for those that could do $100. And we know that there were some that could not do the $100, but what we'd like to do is give you an opportunity to come up to that 100 So if you gave uh, 50 so far, and this is a, a good opportunity for you to, to give 50 more. If you know that you haven't given the $100 uh, and you're able to give something, uh, we want you to give you an opportunity uh, to do that. And we, we're asking that you please be in support of your council on today. So we're not asking for an additional offering from those that have already given that $100. But what we are asking you to do, to do your very best uh, to support your council. And I know that uh, everybody here loves the SCDC, correct? Now, I've got a few people that love it. Most people love the SCDC here? 
<laughs> Amen. So uh, what, what I want to ask you to do, if you would be so kind to participate in an offering of giving on today, for those that have not given the $100, we'll ask that you give a little bit more or come up to that $100 as close as you can. Even, of course, for those of you that are live streaming, if you would do the same, if you would join us in giving uh, toward the, the council. There are some wonderful things that our council uh, wants to get done. We can't do it without you. Now, you are the council, so we certainly do appreciate your participation. For those that want to give on today, that have something in hand that you want to leave with us on today, uh, our treasurer is here with a basket. You simply need to raise your hand, and they'll serve you in that before we get ready to go into the general body. For everyone else that wants to give, be sure to go to our council website. If you have your smartphone or your tablets near you, for those who are at home as well, uh, take your smartphone. Go to sedcpcaf.net and click on the giving link at the top. Raise your hands high if you have something that you want to give so the treasurer can see you. Uh, yeah, somebody might have to help him see because there are people with their hands up. <laughs> uh, that's right. Uh, so go to sedcpcaf.net. Uh, I think they're asking me to, to, to stand down a little bit. Uh, amen. Uh, so click on the giving link there and you'll be able to use your uh, check card or your debit card to, get, to give. Don't forget to put in the sub fund. Uh, either general giving or general fund, and then we'll know that this is that going toward that one council offering. I appreciate those of you that are giving and that you're giving liberally. Thank you. Thank you for giving. I certainly don't want to leave out those of you that have already given the $100. Uh, many of you gave it on Thursday night. Some of you gave it on Friday night. And uh, we, uh, we certainly do appreciate your, your continued support. Thank you one and all for your giving. I see some other hands are still going up, and thank you for your support. And those of you that are listening by internet, I hope that you're joining us in giving as well on today. Take your smartphone again, go to sedcpcaf.net. I don't know where to stand. sedcpcaf.net and uh, click on the giving link. And of course, again, in the fund, you'll use a general budget and then the sub fund, just click on, uh, I think it's a general offering or general giving. And then we'll know that it's going towards that that, uh, that one offering that I can, our chairman has asked us for. Uh, those of you that are listening by internet, if you're planning on being a part of the general body session, you need to get here in the next few minutes because this live stream is going to end in just a few moments. I'm going to give you back over to the hands of our chairman. Over to our assistant chairman, <laughs> Bishop Rogers. They pointed at each other. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What am I doing? <laughs> okay. I don't have no... What yeah, I need a program in. <laughs> <laughs> 